So settle down onto your backs. And even though it, it seems a little bit cooler today, we're still going to be taking it, you know, quite easy. So we don't get overheated or exhausted. So settle down onto your backs and take a moment to arrive and yeah, have a sense of how you're feeling today. So there's this sense of ourself on all these different levels. So maybe we can start with our body and just being aware of any particular aches or pains in our body. Also a sense of our energy levels. So this is where we might be feeling a little bit tired because of the warm weather. And, and this section here is sleeping. And then you can feel the movement of the breath in your body. You might like to take your hands onto the front of your body. And for two or three cycles of breath, gather your attention into your breathing. Feel the movement of your breath somewhere inside of yourself. And it is you know what level level of our thought preoccupying us. Just acknowledging everything that's present right now. And and then we're going to start to move and start to move every little by little starts to shift as all these layers. So when you're ready, you're going to start to let your head roll a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. And keep it really easy. How's your shoulder, Sarah? Um, I actually did a band with dog um, a couple of days ago okay. and it felt better. So um, yeah. I think it's gradually, gradually um, improving. It does sound like mm. it. I'm not having to. Well, do you smile? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I can't do it. I can't say that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the whole of us comes along with this movement. Just doing this a few more times. If you feel that you'd like to change the cross of your arms and put the other arm on top, you can do. And yes, Sarah, you might find that's enough. And so today we're going to be keeping a little bit our the theme I had last last week um, I had in my teaching and practice of this moving and stillness and how these are both both things that we can do in yoga. Both are helpful. So you're going to uncross your arms now. You're going to settle in the center. And you're going to fold your knees into your chest. And just when you arrive there, see what you'd like to do for a moment. So it's again, do you want to move a little bit or do you want to just sort of be still and quiet? And then we're going to do Apanasana. So we did this last week. So the one where you take one. And this is as much about the breathing as the movement. So we're going to be doing this simple movement six times. So as you breathe in, you let your knees move away from your chest and your arms straighten out. And as you exhale, you fold your knees in towards you. So breathing in, knees away from you. Don't let your knees slide, your, sorry, your hands slide off your knees. Keep them on your knees at all times. Breathing in, the knees fold into your chest. Good, that's nice. Carry on that for another four times. So I always find it really tricky to keep track of my breathing for more than three cycles. So yeah, our minds are distracted by other things. That's nice. Well, I think three more times, breathing in, move, let the knees move away from you. Breathing out, let the knees fold in towards you. And I often find it particularly helpful in this to focus on the out breath. So as I exhale and my knees fold in, really letting my breath completely leave me. So there's no feeling of hurry. I think it might be one more cycle of breath. And then if you like, you could take your legs up to the ceiling, give them a little bit of a shake out. Could add your arms in if you wanted to. That's it. Good. And then from here, you could have a couple of quiet breaths with your knees folded into you or with your feet back on the floor. And then from here, in a moment, you're going to lengthen your legs out on the ground. And just like I long for a moment. I know it's not necessarily that comfortable for everyone. Sometimes if you stretch your heels away from you, that can just help the lower back for a little bit longer. You can stretch the heels away and then relax the legs and do that a couple of times. And from lying long, so with the legs long on the ground, you're going to, when you're ready, roll over onto your belly. And we're just going to see how it feels to come onto the belly. So you can you can keep your head where it is, maybe, unless you're keen to turn your head somewhere else on your mat. So lie down onto your belly, maybe one hand on top of the other and your cheek or your forehead on the back of your hands. That's it. And the first thing to do when you arrive on your belly is to give your pelvis a bit of a wiggle. And then maybe a bit more of a wiggle. Usually that feels quite nice, that's it, Sarah. Have your arm, however, is most comfortable. So wiggling the pelvis, wiggling the pelvis, and then let it settle down. Have a couple of quiet breaths here. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave. Good. And then you can bend your knees and take the soles of your feet to the ceiling and start to tilt your feet to the right and to the left. Now, Tracy or anyone else, if this lower back doesn't like this, just bring the feet back to the floor and come back to a bit of wiggling your pelvis from side to side. So if you quite like the one where you're tilting your feet from side to side, then stay with that a little bit. 
And Tracy, if, if being on your belly feels like it's aggravating your lower back, come into child pose because that's where we're going to go next. Yeah, so a little bit more tilting of your feet from side to side. And then you can carry on with that as long as you like. Then you can come back, let your feet come back onto the ground and have a couple more quiet breaths on your belly. Now at this point, you've got a little bit of a choice because we're from here, we're gonna go on into child pose. So if you like being on your belly, you could stay there for another few breaths. If child pose sounds much more of an appealing prospect, you could make your way into child pose. And again, it doesn't really matter where your head is for the moment. So just sort of fold into child pose as sort of easily and comfortably as you like. And just see how it feels to have a couple of quiet breaths there. So either on your belly, if you're not coming to child pose now, you might like to come into child pose now. And have just a couple more breaths in child pose. And then we're going to start moving on hands and knees, doing a little cat, bit of cat pose, coming into those couple of sequences. So when you're ready, come up onto hands and knees and settle yourself on the floor and we're going to come to some of your cat movements so how does it feel to round your back to the ceiling how does it feel to dip your spine down to the floor keep these movements easy don't feel that you're pushing anything at this point again use these movements as a way to Familiarise yourself with how your body is feeling right now. And also perhaps to start to find a bit more mobility around the lower back. And I probably say this every time, but what I tend to do is a few cat movements. And then I add in a few tail wagging movements once I've got a sense of how my lower back is feeling. And it's very much up to you. You could be sort of mixing up the cat and the tail wagging together. Or like me, you could be doing a bit of cat, but a bit of wagging your tail. If your lower back feels quite tight, when you come to wag your tail, look back towards your feet. So you're wagging your tail with a slightly sort of rounded back. And then when you've done a bit of tail wagging, come back to a little bit more cat. rounding and dipping your spine and just seeing how that feels now. We're going to come back to another child pose in a moment. So I'd like you to round your back to the ceiling in a rounded cat and then rock your hips back over your heels. And just have a couple of breaths in child pose, letting the elbows settle, let the forehead settle. And then we're going to come on into a dog pose. So Sarah, it's, we're going to come from the dog into a forward bend. So I don't know if you want to try your little dog and then come down and then come on to, into a forward bend, yeah. that sort of squat type position. Mm -hmm. So when you're ready, come back onto hands and knees. We're going to come through dog pose and then into a forward bend and roll up into standing and then not do that much in standing and come back down again. So I think big handprints on the floor, tucking your toes under, rocking your hips up and back into dog. And just when we arrive in this first dog pose, we might want quite a lot of movement. You know, first of all, we just sort of see how we feel. It could be quite creaky. That's absolutely fine. Yes, well done, Sarah, don't push it though. Enough. Enough. Yeah, and then sort of come into this, then come into your forward bend from coming back like this. Yeah. Yeah, so give yourself another couple of breaths in dog pose. I think probably at this point, bending one knee, bending the other, just focusing our attention on releasing the back of the legs and settling into the arms as much as possible. And then let's walk the hands in towards the feet. So you come into a forward bend. And in this forward bend, you could let your arms hang, let your head hang, or you could rest your elbows on your thighs, just depending what feels 
more comfortable for you right now. Have one more cycle of breath here. So let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then as you exhale, you're going to roll up into standing or walk your hands up your thighs if your lower back's feeling a little bit um, vulnerable. When you get in standing, stay at the back of your mat because we'll be going back down in a moment. Just look at your feet, check they're well organized. And then come to a little bit of swinging your, just your arms. So you're crossing your arms in front of your body. If you haven't got space to do this and need to, yeah, move from where you are on your mat, <laughs> yes, or where you're going to hit, you could go sideways um, on your mat, on, but keep your feet closer to get, yeah, good. Okay, and then from here, all I'd like you to do is swing your arms all the way up and just see perhaps for a cycle or two of breath, like how is it to have the arms, shoulders drop? Obviously, not you, Sarah, so just let your arms hang. Good. And then from here, make sure you're at the back of your mat again. So maybe just release your arms if you're not there. From the back of your mat, you're gonna go back down into a forward bend for a few breaths, back on into dog pose or so. Forward bend first, Sarah. Good, so a few breaths in the forward bend, a few breaths in dog pose, just enough time to maybe see how this second dog pose feels. And then when we come down onto hands and knees, we're going to step one foot forward. So I've come onto hands and knees and now I'm coming into this sort of, this sort of mini squat position where we've got the front knee over the front heel, the back knee under the pelvis. So we're not, yeah, we're upright here rather than going into a squat yet, Donna. So you might need your front foot slightly further back in. Squat lunge, it's not a lunge, a mini lunge. Have your sort of hip width distance side to side. If anyone else, you've all got two mats, haven't you? But my back knee is not always so happy in this one. So you might need to put some padding under your knee. Are you okay there, Sarah? Yeah. It's just funny, I didn't know it's crack. Is that the knee? That, that was on the knee. floor. Yeah. <laughs> Donna, do you need something under your knee? Yeah. Okay. So what I'd like you to do now is just, can you just sort of swing your arms a little bit? And the idea is we're trying to feel quite planted below the waist, but light in the upper body and the shoulders. And then you're going to end up turning towards your front leg. So try, as you're swinging your arms, try not to let your legs move and then end up turning towards the front leg. That's it, and stay there. So your hand can rest on your knee, your thigh, the back arm, you could give it away, could shake out, rest the hand on the back of your pelvis, good. And just have a few breaths here. So we're thinking really in this one about the back shoulder, moving down, down and back and back. But there's obviously a point where it's not going to go any further and we can just then focus on the movement of our breath within us good okay from here we're going to untwist and now we are going to fold forwards over our front leg and we're going to walk the back leg away so we come now into a, 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 so there's a proper lunge um, if you like me you're sort of running out of space you might need to walk your front foot forwards a bit and then when you arrive in this lunge, let your back knee come down. So, yeah. When you arrive in this lunge, you could stay in the lunge or you could think, okay, maybe some movement would help. If you untuck your back toes, you can start to ease backwards, look back behind you and then rock back into this lunge. So this sort of forwards and back movement where we're easing in and out of lunge. Maybe it just makes the whole thing a little bit more comfortable. And I often find if I do this easing sort of forwards and back a couple of times, then it feels much more helpful to stay in lunge. That I'm in a place where perhaps I can settle, let my pelvis feel heavy and breathe. But you can also carry on easing in and out, just again, depending how your lunge is feeling. Good. We'll just have a couple more breaths on this side. So probably if we finish off with the easing back, 
practice. So foot, back foot flat, easing back, looking back behind you. Let that first twisty one with the other foot set to us. So we can remember which foot to go around just so I don't have to turn away from people. That's it for the time. Good. So coming into this upright one, we've got our front knee over our front heel. And you've got the most steady place here. Yes, we go. Hang on, arms. Good. That's it. So swinging the arms and then eventually turning towards the front leg and staying there. And just seeing if we can feel steady. Can we have a few breaths here? Giving away the back arm, letting that back shoulder drop. So we're really thinking about this relation We'll fold over the front leg. We'll start to tuck the toes under in the back. Back foot walk, walk that back foot. Away. So again, it might be the lunge, and you think, okay, immediately it's going to be better if I start to do a bit of easing forwards and back. forwards into the lunge, seeing how they all feel. Ethernet, a bit of a wiggle. Is any good? You feel you can come into a lunge. For a couple of breaths, that's it. Giving the weight of the pelvis. Now from this sec through a forward a dog pose, forward bend. So you could go straight into your dog pose from this lunge. You, you could come onto hands and knees, sir, or you could do a little squatty. So whenever you're ready, pose. However, you'd like. And when you come into this dog pose, let me just do a little bit of all of one foot and then any other foot. And so you could just do a little bit of bending one knee, bending the other in your forward bend. And coming up onto the ball of each foot in dog pose. Then one foot at a time, you can put the, the tips of the toes onto the very top side of the toes. Just give your feet a little bit of a workout that way. And then from dog pose, you can walk your hands in towards your feet and to join Sarah and everyone else in a forward bend. Let your head go. See how it feels to be in your forward bend now, for heels rooted to the ground, letting your head and your arms tumble forwards or resting your elbows on your thighs. That's it, Tracy. If that's better for your lower back, forward bend. If, if it's okay for you to let your arms and the hands together, otherwise walk your hands up. The front of your legs. So touch the backs of your hands together. So as you come up into standing, you can take your arms straight up to the ceiling, be long and tall, let a breath come in, and then take your arms out in a big circle and into prayer pose in front of you. And I'd like you to keep your hands in prayer pose and look down at your feet. And just, you know, if you want to make any little adjustments to your feet on the floor, just looking at them is helpful because then we're going to start to sway a little bit from side to side. We're going to come into a simple balance in a moment. So you could even close your eyes at this point and just feel your weight shifting over one leg and then the other. 
eventually, this is the point you would open your eyes, eventually you're going to bring your weight onto one foot and bring the other foot to stand on that foot. And again, just quite simple. So when we come to a balance, we have this intention of being sort of quiet and steady, but there might be a bit more movement than we're hoping for. Now from here, if you feel reasonably steady, you could try taking your arms up. Obviously not you, Sarah. Just keep the shoulders heavy and relaxed, good. And see how that feels for a breath or two. We probably don't want to stay there too long with the arms up. So then we could gather the hands back into prayer pose in front of the chest. And then come down. Give your hands and legs a little bit, and feet rather, a little bit of a shake out. And we'll try the same thing on the other side. So again, maybe start with this looking down at your feet, just really being very aware of your feet, settling your feet, bringing the hands into prayer pose. Perhaps this time, think about finding a point to focus your gaze on. And then you're going to be starting to shift your weight onto the other foot, the one you didn't just stand on. And the foot you stood on is coming to stand on top of that foot. That's it. And see how it feels to settle on your second foot. Maybe have another cycle of breath with your hands in prayer pose at your heart. If that all feels okay and you'd like to try taking your arms up, you could do. It's nice to sort of feel this sort of height and length of the arms being up, keep the shoulders relaxed. And then also when we gather our hands back into prayer pose, perhaps this feels a little bit easier. Good. We're still balancing hands back into prayer pose. Another cycle of breath if we can. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave. Um, we're going to come back through the full on the ground. So come back to, if you moved away from the back of your mat, which I don't think most of you did, so come back to the back of your mat and bring your hands in prayer, into prayer pose. So we'll move, we'll move the arms first of all. So if you start with your hands, in prayer come in you can take your arms down and then up you can feel and letting the head go and from your forward And the rest of your dog pose, and just seeing how this dog pose feels. Now, it might be depending on how lightly you're feeling. If you feel that you want to do in poses at this point, you could do. And, uh, and obviously, if you take one leg off the floor, and dog pose, you've still got your hand. Obviously, if you see if you want to like dog pose. Front dog pose, two leg dog pose pose. And just settle quiet. Any in child pose rather unpredictable today. Even though I have that's working properly, yeah, it's working properly. Who knows what's going on? Okay, so a couple of quiet, take the weight, taking the weight out because we're then going to do a little bit more work on hands and knees. When you're ready, coming back onto hands and knees, and we're going to come back to some. Cat movements then to some face up dog, which Sarah, I think that's okay for you. 
is met. Um, we shall see. We'll see. <laughs> so come back onto hands and knees, come back to your cat. And it's really nice now. How does it feel to round your spine with your And feel the breath flowing through your body. And then if you tuck your toes under, we'll see how it feels to move from our cat into our face up dog. So if you tuck your toes under, round your back to the ceiling. Sarah, you might not be able to rock back that far, but you're going to rock back, rock your hips back over your heels to your best ability. Keep your back rounded, let a breath come in. And then as you exhale, you're gonna to start to, oh, you might need to take your hands a little bit further forwards on the floor. As you exhale, then start to travel forward, still rounding your back, still looking back behind you, watching your pelvis come forwards. So you're gonna be coming forwards into your face up dog. That's it, untucking your toes. And then reverse that movement, start to go back. Start to tuck your toes under, start to look back behind you. When you're all the way back, let a breath come in and then exhale, start to travel forwards again with your toes tucked under, watching your pelvis come forwards back into your face up dog. Good, and we'll repeat that one more time. So going back, tucking the toes under, thinking about rounding your back to the ceiling, Sarah, you just go back as far as you can. Let a breath come in and then use the out breath to take you forward, rounding your back to the ceiling, arriving in face up dog. This third face up dog, you might have a couple of extra breaths there if you feel comfortable. Let the pelvis hang, let the shoulders come down away from the ears. And then this time go back into child pose with your feet flat. So a normal child pose. Have a couple of breaths there, just let yourself settle and quieten. And then in a moment, we're going to use our tail wagging movements to take ourselves into face up dog. And yeah, Sarah, how was that with the shoulder? Um, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't too bad actually. Okay, it's just, yeah, you just can't go back all the way. Yeah, no, but, yeah. but yeah, actually, I thought just put that movement in okay for your shoulder. Okay, so where you are in child pose, so Sarah, you won't be able to do this, but the rest of you in child pose, slide your hands forwards on the floor, so your elbows come off the floor, and then plant your hands there, and then come up onto hands and knees, and Sarah, you can join at this point, so come into a longer hands and knees. Mm -hmm. And then from here, you're basically going to wag your tail back towards child, and so that's the way you won't be able to go, and then forwards into face up dog. So this side to side movement of the pelvis, let this take you back towards child, and forwards towards face up dog. And this can just feel very helpful, because it can, yeah, feel that we're sort of sneaking ourselves forwards into face up dog, perhaps with it feeling a bit less effortful. And it can feel very nice going back into child pose. And again, I was going to say, do three face-up dogs, if that feels okay. The third one, you might stay for a little bit longer. I'm going to need an extra breath or two. <laughs> That's plenty. And after your third face-up dog, again, I've already managed to lose count. After the third face-up dog, then end up in child pose or a couple of breaths. Child pose or kneeling if you prefer. And just let yourself have a couple of, yeah, quiet breaths, let the weight come out of, you know, your, your wrists and your hands ease out. Let the breath come in, leave. So one last time. Time we're going through then pulling up into standing. So whenever you're ready, and obviously have some water if you need it. If you want, once you're up there. So hands and knees, tucking the toes under, exhaling, tucking yourself up into dog pose. Let me just see in this dog pose as we've done a few dog poses, or Sarah, and you'll fall with them. I'm in a place now where you can be sort of quiet in dog. And it might not be, it 
It might be that you still move to be bending your knees, but you could do that and then see for a breath or two. How is it if you're quiet and dull? Let the head hang, rest through your arms. Feel the movement of your breath in your body. If it starts to get a little bit tiring through your arms, which it might do after the face up dogs, then start to walk your hands in towards your feet. And the same thing in your forward bend. Can you, can you rest in your forward bend? Can you just sort of be there quite quiet? Maybe resting the elbows on your thighs, letting a breath come in, letting a breath leave. If it's okay for your lower back, we will roll up into standing and touching the backs of the hands together. Obviously, you just walk your hands up your thighs. If that's better, same one goes here, yeah, let the breath come in. Same. And then have a little shake out. And now maybe come towards the middle of your mat because we're going to do that. We're not going to go straight back down to the ground. We're going to do a couple more things in standing. So, Sarah, for this, this first, which is the left? Okay, so you'll be fine on the right side. So, start looking at your feet. We're going to come to, a, yeah, when you had a shake out of feet, we're going to come to a standing balance. And I'd like you to reach up with your right arm. And feel that you can even, but don't let the left leg come up completely. And then just come out of that. Bring the right arm down. Both feet back, back to the ground. Up through your right arm. Start shifting your weight onto your right leg. Let the left heel come up. This time you're going to go further and you're going to pick the left foot off the floor and catch the top of your left foot. So we're coming into this balance where we've caught, or we've caught our trouser leg in our left leg. That's it, good. And once you've caught your foot, you can then bring your hand down onto your breastbone. So let your knee drop down towards the floor. We're trying to feel that the two knees are level and often the knee needs to move back a little bit more and in a little bit more. Sometimes it's helpful to bring the hand onto the belly. Our belly stays sort of soft and the belly is sort of falling back. That's it, even as the knee is dropping. Good. Let another breath come in. Let another breath leave you. Good, very nice. And then come out, have a little shake out. Good arms, legs. And we'll try the same thing on the other side. So Sarah, this side, just take your left hand onto your breastbone, so don't do the reaching up. So come, settle your feet down for a moment and then come to reaching up into your left arm, shifting your weight onto your left leg. We're not gonna go all the way this first time. Let the right heel come up and just see how it feels to be at that point. Almost at the point of balancing and not quite. And then come back down again, bring that arm down, bring the right foot fully onto the floor. And then again, reach up with the left arm. Start to shift your weight onto your left leg. Let the right heel come up. And then this time, let that foot come up completely so you can catch the top of your foot. You can let your knee drop. Good. And then you can bring your hand onto your breastbone. And just see how it feels to settle here. So again, we're trying to feel that our knee is level. With the standing knee yeah <laughs> we can't really see it so we're trying to sort of feel that in the field of our awareness often the knee needs to come back a little bit and in a little bit and it might be helpful to bring the hands from the bed the chest onto the belly because sometimes as we're adjusting our knee our belly starts to move forwards good i keep feeling that that sort of belly can fall back Yes, do come out, have a little shake out. We're going to come back to that one in a moment, take it a bit further, but we're going to do a couple of other things. We will do some arm swinging as well, Donna. So what I'd like you to do is, with a bit of space in front of you on your mat, it doesn't mean to be loads, you're going to step one foot forwards. 
and you're then going to be this sort of walking but not getting anywhere rocking your weight into the front foot so you come onto the ball of the back foot and into the back foot so you come onto the heel of the front foot and as you do so just letting everything drop down into your feet so you're just feeling your feet on the floor and the feet might start to feel quite big because that's our focus and then eventually you're going to let both feet settle down and at this point i'd like you to look down at your feet and often we find that the back foot is turned, the heels turned in. And I'd like you to try and get both feet so they're pointing forwards, even if it makes you feel a bit more wobbly, because that's part of the point here. It is a little bit of a balance, trying to be steady with both feet pointing forwards. And then bring your hands onto your pelvis. We're gonna swing our arms here, and we're gonna try not to move below the waist. So if you just have this awareness of where your pelvis is, then we can swing our arms and we can turn our shoulders and our head, but we can try not to turn our hips and our pelvis and try to keep our legs really planted and our feet really steady, good. Okay, very nice. And then if you pause in the center, you're going to fold forwards over the front leg and you're gonna bend your front knee, keeping your back leg straight. So you could rest your hands or your forearms on your bent front thumb. Or you could go lower down and bring your chest close to your thigh, let your head go, let your arms go, let the breath come in, let the breath leave. And just have another couple of cycles of your forward bend, your breath in this forward bend. So bent front knee, straight back leg, back heel really anchoring into the ground. And then on an exhalation, sink into both heels and come back up into standing. Good. And give your legs a little shake out. So we're going to do all of that on the other side. Forward to back. And it's this feeling that we just have these big, very aware feet. So all we're doing here is rocking forwards and back, feeling the feet on the floor, heel of the front foot, ball of the back foot. Eventually we can settle down into both feet. And then this is the point to perhaps look at the feet. And if the back heels turned in, bring that back foot so it's pointing forwards, even if that makes you feel a bit less steady. It also makes us feel a little bit more aware. So hands on the pelvis. So we've got both feet put it, pointing forwards. We've just really got to keep our attention in them. And then we start to swing our arms and our legs. So the pelvis and the legs don't move. It's just the upper body. Good. Very nice. You can do it a couple more times, and then we'll, when you're ready, you can come into the forward bend on this side. So that's bending the front knee, keeping the back leg straight, and just deciding how far forwards you're going to go. Is it resting your elbow on that front leg? Are you going to go further? Are you going to bring your chest towards that bent front thigh? Let your head go. Let your arms go. Have a few breaths there. The breath come in, let the breath leave. And then when you're ready, sinking down into your heels, rolling up into standing. Good. And have a little shake out. So we're going to come back to our first foot stepped forwards, and now we're going on back into that back balance we were doing and take it a little bit further so the balance with when we caught the top of our foot so come back so you stepped your first foot forwards you can come back to a little bit of this rocking forwards and back weight into the front foot weight into the back foot we're going to be taking all of our weight into our front foot in a foot feet in a moment if you bring your front foot hand onto your chest onto your breastbone and then whenever you're ready 
Maybe the next time your weight comes into your front foot, then the floor can back foot. And this is our sort of starting off point here. And from here, you could then see how does it feel to reach forwards with the hand that's on your breastbone and reach the foot back behind you that you caught. And just see where you get to. So you're reaching the foot away from your bottom, good. Very nice. And we're having a few breaths there. As we move in this, it's quite possible that we might topple out a bit. That's nice, Sarah, you could bring your hands into prayer pose. Um, so we could come back to our sort of start off point and just we might have to come out of it and then just try it again from here. So the same side, what's it like to start off point, hand on the breastbone, we've caught the foot, where, where do we get to if we words and this roll me. So you don't have to do it a second time, but you might not stay there so long the second time. <laughs> Very nice, well done. Beautiful, definitely have a little shake out of legs. I was thinking my second time was made harder by not having done that between the sides. Mm. And water seems to be the um, seems to be water break time. So let's come now to stepping the other foot forwards. So not the one foot we were just standing on, a little bit of this rocking forwards and back with our foot stepped forwards. That's it. So again, this just helps us to drop down into our feet. Bring your front, front foot hand onto your breastbone. And then whenever you're ready, so maybe the next time your weight comes into your front foot, you're then catching the top of your back foot. And this is our sort of start off point here. So we might have a couple of breaths and then we're starting to reach the back foot back behind us. And we're reaching forwards with our hand that was on our breastbone. We're maybe tipping forwards a bit. We're maybe letting our pelvis turn towards the back leg side. And then we might come out and then we might try again. So just, you know, to see where we get to. And, and if you try a second time, it might just be more about the movement. It might not be that you stay there. You might come into it with perhaps less attention and that's fine. And it might just be, yeah, where could I go to? And maybe I won't stay. Good. Yes, and then exactly, Emma, some shaking out some water. We're going to be making our way in a moment down through a forward bend and dog down into child and then some lying down. What I'd like you to do is come to stand at the back of your mat. And you're now going to, we did this last week, um, you're now just going to choose whether you want to move or be still. And so I was just thinking actually perhaps a little bit of a wiggle of the pelvis from side to side and standing, possibly shaking the arms out. And then just settle in standing at the back of your mat. Close your eyes, let your shoulders drop. Feel the flow of your breath for a couple of cycles. And then at the back of your mat, you're going to roll down into a forward bend. And you could in this forward bend do those movements then when you're sweeping your arms from side to side around the fronts of your feet. You don't have to, but you might like to do that. You might like to just be quiet in your forward bend or maybe sweep your arms a bit and then be quiet in your forward bend. Good. So maybe a bit of movement and then a bit of quiet in the forward bend. Good. And then from there, you're going to be walking your hands forwards into dog pose. And when you arrive in your dog, yes, Sarah, well done. So you see that sort of mini dog where you're yeah, keeping some weight back in your legs. And when you arrive in dog, you can either move or you can be quiet in dog, or you can do a bit of both. So forward bend, dog pose. And 
from dog pose, you can then fold down into child pose. And even in child pose, we don't necessarily need to be quiet. We could be doing a bit of side to side wiggling of our pelvis. If that's what feels good in child. Or it might be that you want to have a couple of quiet breaths. Or it might be that you want to be in kneeling, feeling the breath come in, feeling the breath leave. From here, we're going to start making our way back into line. So from child pose, you're going to be slithering forwards onto your belly. And you're going to be settling yourself comfortably on your belly. So maybe that's, yeah, Sarah, whatever works for your shoulder. So maybe it's your hands resting under your forehead or your cheek resting on the back of of your hands. So I often have one hand on top of the other and my cheek or my forehead resting on the back of the hands and wiggling the pelvis. So on the belly, wiggling the pelvis. That's it, wiggle the pelvis. And be still for a moment. Feel a cycle of breath move through you. When we breathe on the belly, we maybe feel the movement of the breath more in the back of the body. And then if you like, you can bend your knees, take the soles of your feet to the ceiling. Start to let your feet tilt to the right and to the left. Okay. So if you want to do a little bit more of that, you can stay with the feet tilting from side to side. You can also lengthen, sorry, um, Tracy, you can wiggle your pelvis a bit more. You can also bring your legs back onto the ground long and have a quiet breath or two. And Tracy, you might be ready to roll onto your back. So from the belly, we're going to roll onto the back. And help to settle yourself on your back. And when you arrive on your back, just do, to start with, just do whatever you want. So I'm gonna give you a, a few moments just to do whatever you want when you arrive on your back. And whatever you want might be nothing, which is also fine. And on our backs, we're going to, in a moment, once you've settled, we're going to do a sequence which takes us into bridge pose. Sarah, I think perhaps in this one you miss, I mean, you could move one arm, but you might just want to miss the arm. You could leave your arms relaxed by your sides. I think would probably be better. So, yeah, on your back, settle down with your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor. And you're going to bring your hands onto your belly. So when we do this sequence, we move with the out breath and then we receive the in breath wherever we are. So it's, it's a bit like Apanasana. It's as, it's as much about the breathing as it is about the movement. The movement's quite simple, but um, the two work together so to help keep us focused. So you're going to have your hands on your belly. You're going to feel the cycle of breath come in. You're going to feel a cycle of breath leave. You have your hands quite low on your belly, actually, Donna, I think. That's it. Good. And on your next exhalation, so let a breath come in. And on the next exhalation, you're going to take your arms up to the ceiling and then down to rest on the floor either side of your head. But you could take them very wide. That's it. That's it, Tracy. Good. And when your arms are there, that's it. So your arms can be here, Donna, but they just need to be on the floor. Yeah, so take them wider if they don't rest on the floor. When your arms are either side of, on the floor, either side of your head, make sure your elbows are resting down, but take them wider if they're not. Let a breath come in. So you receive the in-breath there. Next exhalation, you go down into your feet and you come up 
into a little bridge pose. So sink in your, into your feet, come into bridge pose and receive an in-breath and bridge pose. And then as you exhale, you're coming back down out of bridge. You're placing your vert spine onto the floor vertebrae by vertebrae. As your pelvis touches the ground, you receive an in-breath. And then as you exhale, you bring your hands back onto your belly. Good. So I'm going to talk you through again. So you're going to receive an inhalation with your hands on your belly. As you exhale, you're going to take your arms up and over to rest on the floor, somewhere by the side of your head, but it could be quite wide. Receive the in-breath here and feel really wide across the front of your chest. And then as you exhale, go down into your footprints and roll up into a little bridge pose. It's whatever is comfortable. Receive your in-breath and bridge pose. And then as you exhale, start to place your spine back down onto the floor. As the back of your pelvis touches the floor, you receive an inhalation. And then as you exhale, you bring your hands back to your belly. So that thing of sort of gathering the energy into your belly. And then receive an in-breath with your hands on your belly. And then exhale, taking your arms back up onto the floor, wherever they rest, either side of your head, quite wide. Receive an in-breath there. And then the next exhalation down into your footprints. Let some of the spine come away from the floor into bridge pose. Receive an in-breath in bridge pose. Feel wide in your ribs. And then as you exhale, spine back onto the floor, vertebrae by vertebrae. Receive an in-breath as your pelvis touches the ground. So you feel this great widening across the back of the pelvis. And then exhaling hands onto your head. I'd like you to do that three more times on your own and just see if you can find your way through. So remember, you're always moving as you breathe out. And then giving yourself time to receive the in-breath wherever you arrived with your exhalation. And when we receive the inhalation, there's that feeling of sort of width, the spaciousness, particularly sort of sideways width in the body. That's very nice. So when your arms are resting on the floor and then you breathe in, it's feeling wide across the front of your chest. Exhale into bridge pose. When you're in bridge pose and you receive an inhalation, it's the feeling of being very wide through your ribs. And as you roll out of bridge and you breathe in as your pelvis touches the ground, it's this feeling of width across the back of the pelvis. Take your time, there's no rush, but when you have finished, you can fold your knees into your chest, just so that I know you have finished. And when you have finished and folded your knees, so if there's no rush, take your time. Just um, when you have folded your knees into your chest, just do whatever you like, which might be lying quietly. It might be a little bit of rocking from side to side.
Good. And we could just from here do a sort of just a few breaths on each side, a simple floor twist. Now, this is the one with the legs off the ground. So if you prefer to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor, you could. Otherwise, the one variation I've been enjoying is to take the legs up towards the ceiling and then bend the knees a bit so you can wrap one arm around the back of your knees. And then the other arm comes out on the floor at shoulder height. So I always like to take my arm around the back of my knees now, my legs are up towards the ceiling because then my lower back really lengthens out. And so then if you want to do this twist, your knees are moving down towards the floor in the opposite direction to the shoulder that's resting on the ground. Good, and have a couple of breaths there. And yes, again, I, like some of you are doing, I would keep my arm under my legs and just see how it feels. And in a couple of breaths there, you can come back to the centre. You can take your legs back up to the ceiling, so in between sides, Take your legs back up to the ceiling, give them a shake out. And then again, this feeling when, you're, when your legs are still lengthening up towards the ceiling, wrapping one arm around the back of your knees, really folding those thighs closely in towards you. Other arm comes onto the floor at shoulder height. And then moving into the second side of the twist. And you can keep your arms supporting your legs. You don't necessarily need to stay there for a long time. It might be that you just would like a few cycles of breath there. But equally, if it feels helpful, you can stay there a bit longer. the breath come in, let the breath leave, maybe come back to the centre. I think probably now we should just lie quietly for a few cycles of breath. I'm going to ring the singing bowl in a moment, but just settle yourself down if you're not in a rush. I don't think any of us have to be in a rush on this warm Friday. So let the length and weight of your body settle onto the ground. Just let yourself as much as possible rest, let the weight of your body rest on the ground. Feel the flow of your breath somewhere within you. And feel the air on your skin. Feel the breath flow in, feel the breath flow out. You don't have to, if you don't have to get up and go anywhere, you don't need to, you can just stay quietly lying down 
And it's very nice to see everyone. Alice, it's very nice to see you. I haven't seen you for a while. It's lovely to see you. And I'm sorry, the internet's a bit iffy today, but um, yeah, do you want me off if you'd like? Oh, say anything. Bye. <sighs> So nice. Oh, so lovely. Thank you. Nice. Beautiful. Oh, so you're at your dad's. Yes, I'm in the bedroom, but it's just such a joy. I needed that. I really did. And so it's been lovely. Oh, so lovely to see you. Yeah. Have a good summer. Yeah. Take care. Lots of love. Bye, Emma. Nice to see you on a Friday morning.